Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Jeep Saw Garage. So today we're actually outside. I'm going to be working on my 94 Wrangler here a little bit. And then I'm going to take you inside to the 92, the Project 92 YJ. We're going to be replacing the distributor. I'm going to walk you through that process. I have another video where I show an issue with the distributor where it's starting to wear out, the bearings are starting to go, it's making a lot of squeaking. I'll link that in the description below and probably put a card up here. So check that out. Uh, it's just one of the issues you can have with the, your distributor. Now replacing the distributor, it's not that hard, but there you gotta be very careful. There's some very precise things you gotta do. So let's take a look at my 94 here. This is obviously the four liter six cylinder engine. The process is very similar for the uh, 2.5 four cylinder as well. Very first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect the negative battery cable there. We don't wanna be having the engine start up on us while we're doing this. And be sure to chalk your wheels. Take the Jeep out of gear. And now we need to find a top dead center for cylinder number one. Cylinder number one, where are we at? Right there all that spark plug wire back. So this is a uh, spark plug wire for cylinder one and we need to find top dead center on the compression stroke because we want the uh, rotor lined up exactly with the spot. Let's take the distributor cap off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's take the wire off to the coil here. Now we can lift the distributor cap up out of the way. Maybe. You want to leave all your wires attached. You don't want to get the order messed up, so leave all those attached. Just kind of pull it up out of the way here. So now we can see the rotor here. The next thing we need to do, we're going to rotate the crankshaft down here on your vibration dampener. It's really hard to see on this. Uh, that's why I'm going to take you into the Project 92 YJ so you can get a little better view. We're going to rotate that vibration dampener after we've taken spark plug number one out, we're gonna take this out, put our finger in there, and we're gonna rotate that clockwise. You don't wanna rotate it counterclockwise against the way the engine's naturally supposed to go. Rotate it clockwise with our finger in this hole right here, and we're gonna feel for compression. And when we feel air start to blow out of that hole, we know that that's the compression stroke for cylinder number one. And that's key, that's what we want. Now the fan here is on a clutch. It, uh, it can spin independently. So we're gonna get our wrench on our crankshaft down here. And this is why I had you take it out of gear earlier. You can't do this with your vehicle in gear. You can hold the fan still here as you turn your crankshaft there while you're feeling for compression. But this is where it really helps to have a buddy or somebody help you. Just makes it a little bit easier to have somebody turn this for you while you're feeling for compression there. Then we're gonna line up the timing mark. I'll show you all this on the Project 92 YJ. That would be just a little bit easier to see. Okay, here we are with the Project 92 YJ. This will just be a lot easier to show you this process with this engine out of the vehicle. It's hard to get camera angles and all that with my arms in the way when you're trying to reach down and show things. So. This will make it a lot easier. So let me show, continue with this process. So as I said, we've got the uh, distributor cap off, rotors here. We went ahead and took the spark plug out of cylinder number one, left every, all the others in place. And now our vibration dampener pulley here. This is what we're turning. This is uh, turns our crankshaft right there. And that's where we're putting our socket. And there's our timing marks. And there's a notch on here. Let me find that for you. Actually, let me clean this all up for you. You can barely see that. There we go. That's a little better. So now here's the uh, zero degree mark. That's what I'm going to be referring to when we're lining this little notch right here. And actually a little tip to uh, make that notch more visible. And if you can, just get a little bit of white paint and paint on the sides here around that notch. That just kind of makes it stand out a little bit better so you can see that notch a little bit better for 
your timing. So now as we're turning this crankshaft clockwise, we've got our finger stuck in the little hole here. This is actually the exhaust stroke. So my, so my mark is coming around in alignment here with my gauge there as I'm turning this. But I know that that is my uh, exhaust stroke because up here on my rotor, my rotor is aimed at like the 11 o'clock position. When it is on the compression stroke down at top dead center for cylinder one, standing here on the side, it's actually the rotor is going to be pointing down towards the five o'clock position. So that tells me that we're on the exhaust stroke right now. So if I keep turning, if I keep turning the crank here. Now I feel it starting to blow on my finger there. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna turn this until that notch is lined directly up with the zero mark on our gauge there. Now if you go a little bit past, that's okay, but you gotta just keep going the same clockwise direction. You can't adjust and just bring it back a little bit. You don't wanna go counterclockwise. Okay, now that we have our timing aligned with the top dead center, on the compression stroke for cylinder number one. Notice the uh, relationship of our rotor on our distributor here, pointing at the five o'clock position. Now it's a good idea at this point to mark the rotor distributor cap relationship here. We're gonna carry that over to our, dis did I say distributor cap? Distributor. We're gonna carry this mark over to the distributor cap as well. I'm just going to seat our distributor cap back on here and I'm going to mark it as well. Now the reason I do that and yeah maybe it's a little bit of overkill but if you start having timing issues you're going to wish you'd done this. What we're going to do is we're going to carry this uh, mark from the distributor cap over to our new distributor so when we pull this guy out put our new distributor in here we can line that cap up and make sure that the rotor is pointing at the exact same spot. So it just keeps everything in alignment. Okay, now that we're happy with how everything's marked, we're top dead center. You can't move your Jeep at all forward back because your crankshaft's gonna turn. You gotta keep everything right where it's at. We can go ahead and, uh, let's see, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. we we'll go ahead and remove the hold down bolt on the distributor. And we can pull the distributor out. Now when I lift this out, you're gonna notice the rotor here rotate counterclockwise a little bit. Yeah, that was kind of fast, huh? But anyways, the reason that it rotates like that, it has a gear where it sets on the uh, crankshaft down there. And this is a helical cut gear, so you can see how it's kind of twisted. So when you set it down in there or pull it out, this kind of rotates a little bit. That's why the position of your rotor is so important. Now if you look down in the hole here, you'll see a slot in the oil pump gear. You can see how it's at the 11 o'clock position because this is a six cylinder, four liter. If you're doing the four cylinder, 2.5 liter, that is gonna be set at the 10 o'clock position. And if for some reason it's not set at that 11 o'clock position, it's just a matter of sticking a uh, flat blade screwdriver down in there and setting it exactly where you want it. All right, so now we're gonna take our new distributor. Hey, look who stopped by. So we're gonna line up our new distributor, this uh, little fork right here, U-shape hold down area. We're gonna line it up with the bolt hole there. We are gonna put the rotor at about the four o'clock position, and that should line up with the 11 o'clock position with the uh, oil gear down there. What, what time? Four o'clock to 11 o'clock. And when we slide it down in position, it'll rotate clockwise down into the five o'clock position. And make sure the distributor is seated all the way down onto the base and that your uh, hold down bolt is lined up with that little fork there. If it's not seating down all the way, you might have to take it out and try repositioning it. And let's double check with the distributor here with the cap. So if we put the cap back on, Well, before I do that, I can't have this flopping around on me. 
I'm gonna go ahead and throw the throw down the hold down bolt. <laughs> the throw, <laughs> the throw down. down bolt. The hold down bolt in place there just to kind of keep it in position. Now we can throw our distributor cap back on. And I'm just gonna take a little paint, mark my spot there again on my new distributor. If we take the cap back off, the rotor should be lined up with our paint mark. And we're gonna torque the hold down bolt here to 17 foot pounds. Some of the new uh, distributors have a hold down pin to hold the rotor in this position. You gotta remove that pin before you put the cap on. That pin has to come out. But otherwise, you put everything back together and you should be good to go. Do you really know what you're talking about? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you just making all this up? Because it sounds like blah, 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 blah. No, I think it sounds pretty good. Hey guys, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Stickers are officially on sale. Five bucks, just email me at dale.jeepsolid.com. I'll leave a link below where you can order yourself a sticker. Five bucks, free shipping. Who doesn't like free shipping? Thanks for watching.